This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room in Chicago at the annual ASCO meeting, and we're joined now by Dr. Mace Rothenberg, Senior Vice President of Clinical Development and Medical Affairs, Pfizer Oncology Business Unit. Hi, Dr. Rothenberg. Hi, Selma. How are you? I'm great. So let's use a really good example mm -hmm. of a tumor type that has been so significantly impacted by research and technology and that's lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And last year all over ASCO, the big talk was about ALK. Mm -hmm. And let's sort of take our viewers through the process of, of, of the identification of that mutation mm -hmm. and the subsequent therapy that evolved. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful story. It's the confluence of good science, good communication, good collaboration, and a bit of good luck. Because when the drug that we're talking about called crizotinib was first introduced into clinical testing, it was actually targeted against something completely different, uh, a, a protein called CMET. But like many molecules that are targeted, it has other targets as well, one of which was ALK. But we knew that ALK was associated with some rare cancers, but we really focused on the more common MET uh, target in cancer. So the, the drug was in clinical testing, and about a year after it entered clinical testing, there was a report halfway around the world from Tokyo, from the, the uh, laboratory of Dr. Hiro Mano, that associated a translocation of the ALK gene with another gene called EML4. And this was found in, in his experience between 7 and 8% of lung cancer patients. That was interesting, but it was really the subsequent paper that was published in 2008 that really changed everything because what his laboratory did was it took that construct, put it into normal cells, and it transformed them into cancer cells. What they also did was put that construct into mouse embryo cells, and the mice that were born developed cancer of only one organ, and that was lung cancer. And then they injected that construct into newborn mice, and it went to one, to one organ alone to cause cancer, and that was the lung. So suddenly we were seeing that this was potentially a driver of lung cancer. And so at the same time, in, in, in Boston, at Mass General, there was interest in this, and they began looking at patient samples for the same kind of translocation. And what they found was that there were patients whose tumors had this. And fortunately, our trial, our phase one trial, was open in Boston as well. And so they actually were able to refer a patient for this, and that patient had advanced metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, had received multiple lines of prior therapy, and had a wonderful response. So we knew we were onto something then. And over the ensuing few months, we basically changed the focus of development of crizotinib from a MET-focused development pathway to an ALK-focused development pathway. And during this time, as we saw more and more patients receive this, more and more patients respond to this, we then engaged with the FDA and other regulatory agencies to share this information with them and to really, along with them, to build a development plan that will allow us to de develop the drug and a way of diagnosing these kinds of patients, so a companion diagnostic at the same time. And this had never been done before. So it really was a collaboration between um, industry, academia, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and diagnostic companies, and of course patients that were referred for this testing. And to make a long story short, four years after this ALK translocation was first identified, Zalcori was approved by the FDA. So it shows you the power of what focused development can do for drug development. Today, no treatment, no patient would be advised to start their lung cancer treatment without having the proper uh, genomic or genetic testing, uh, the molecular pathology to understand their nature of their yeah. cancer to see if they have a mutation that would mm -hmm. allow yeah, them yeah. to benefit from yeah. this agent. That's what we're driving towards. We're not there yet. 100% of patients are not actually getting their tumor tested. And we think that that's a goal that is going to be, help everybody because the more you understand about the cancer, the more you can select the right therapy for it. But the standard of care, would it not be that a patient should not begin 
their treatment without being tested? Well, it, it's, it's hard to say what the standard of care is from different uh, centers around the, the country and around the world. But I think at the centers that see and treat a lot of lung cancer, that's what they're heading towards. They are characterizing all the patients uh, that come in with lung cancer for not only ALK but EGFR mutation, and in some cases other driver mutations that may be in a subset and allow patients to be referred to a clinical trial that target that particular pathway. How now, Dr. Rothenberg, does a drug land up or this ALK mutation, uh, do you discover its role in pediatric cancers? Yeah. So that was um, actually in the early 1990s, this um, gene, ALK, was first discovered in pediatric neuroblastoma. And it was found to have an important role there and also in anaplastic lymphoma. So that's how it got its name, anaplastic lymphoma kinase for anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And so, you know, this was something where as we began to learn about how ALK was a reasonable target for, for Zelcori, uh, we actually engaged with the children's oncology group and actually started a trial that was presented here at ASCO this year um, where it was tested in, in, in children with ALCL and with neuroblastoma. And the results were just really uh, wonderful to see that in eight of eight patients who had metastatic, in many cases recurrent, large cell, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, they had not only responded, but they had complete responses, so all evidence of the disease went away. Now, it's not to say these patients are cured, but that's, I think, a great start, and we're all very gratified to see the activity in, in this area of need. And also, we saw that there was activity in, in a number of children with neuroblastoma uh, and also some rare soft tissue sarcomas called IMT. So I think it's a good way of following the science, of understanding what the drug target is, where that, which tumors actually uh, um, uh, express that target or rely on that pathway, and then being able to evaluate the drug in an expeditious fashion in that group of patients. We're often criticized for delaying the initiation of evaluation of new cancer therapies in children where there's still a great unmet need. But because of the recognition that this was, was relevant biology in children, we actually did start that almost simultaneously with moving Zalcori ahead in lung, lung cancer, we started the pediatric evaluation. And as we've seen from the presentation that Yael Masse made here at ASCO, um, that was a good decision because it showed the potential of this drug in children with pediatric cancer. And I think it's so exciting to see an identification of, let's say, one pathway for, you know, or one mutation that impacts a certain cancer and then you discover, oh my goodness, look at the implications mm -hmm. for all these other cancer types mm -hmm. that for these patients that could benefit yeah. from a prior discovery. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is that, you know, was this just a lucky break and was this a one-off occurrence? And I think one of the things that's clear is that the answer is no, that this is now an approach that's being applied to more and more drugs in our pipeline and with others and more and more cancers. A good example is a drug that's in earlier stages of development that targets a cell cycle regulatory protein called CDK4-6. Investigators at Memorial Sloan Kettering, led by Gary Schwartz, identified that this pathway is amplified in more than 90% of adults with a soft tissue sarcoma called liposarcoma. And so, and it has a very bad prognosis with standard therapy. And so what they reported at this meeting was that evaluating this particular drug, just known as PD-991, um, that they actually saw a level of activity that was far beyond what they were anticipating, and they feel this is a very promising drug for further evaluation. So again, another drug being rationally developed in a segment of patients whose tumors have this pathway activated and seeing a high level of activity. Thank you, Dr. Mace Rothenberg, for sharing with us sort of an inside peek at what goes on in drug development and how profound the changes are compared to where we were 20 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. That's one thing you'd always count on in oncology is that the field is always changing and it's changing fast. Dr. Mace Rothenberg, Senior Vice President of Clinical Development and Medical Affairs, Pfizer Oncology Business Unit. Thanks Thank again, Dr. Rothenberg. Thank you.